ho, ho. Today we are going to be solving a Christmas themed JavaScript algorithm problem. And I'm not just talking about some random leak code problem. I'm talking about something that you might actually use in an actual real world environment. And if you're wondering, yes, I did buy this hat just for this video. It's very itchy. And the problem we're solving today is called Santa's emoji hack. It is day three of JavaScriptmas, which is essentially Scrimba and MDM's 24 days of JavaScriptmas challenge. Basically every single day, a brand new JavaScript challenge challenge drops and each time you submit your solution to one of the problems or you share it you get a ticket to enter into their brand giveaway that will be happening after it is done which includes a 13 inch macbook air or lifetime subscription to scrimba which in my opinion is super worth it as well as some mdm and scrimba merch so of course if you want to enter in and solve these challenges on a daily basis the link to that will be in the description and the comment section below but essentially today's problem revolves around santa claus hating negative emojis you are given a piece of text like for example this one, just read your article, colon, thumbs down, colon. And if you're not familiar with emoji short codes, essentially you put the actual emoji you want in between colons and it usually renders the emoji. And that's something that's standard on Slack and Discord. But in this case, there's a bit of a twist. You're not only writing the logic to render it down, but Santa Claus does not like negative emojis. So you have a list here of the negative emojis. And instead of those emojis, you will be replacing them with a positive one. So for example, if someone put colon cry colon in their sentence, Instead of replacing that with the cry emoji, you're replacing that with the happy emoji. All right, this problem also has a stretch goal, which is like something extra you can do if you want to like, you know, be a really sick coder. Let's listen in. Actually type in the emojis instead of the short codes. Well, that is your stretch goal. Don't just replace the short codes, but also any emojis that are added directly to the text. Now, this is just a stretch goal. It's not obligatory. So only do it if you want to. Now, if All right, you scroll, chat. there chat 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 we definitely want to do this so let's get started here okay so first look at the code they give us they give us a map of all the emojis we want to actually change which is nice they give us a function that i'm guessing we have to fill in here called emojify word and then down here we have emojify phrase okay so this is where this is like the entry point our code um and you can see here it gives us a sample case of so those shoes puke uh, I guess you should replace the puke emoji, emoji with the stars. So it'll be those shoes and then star emoji. So let's move quick. The Santa hat is getting a bit itchy. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take the phrase. I'm going to create a list of words using the split function. So phrase.split. We're going to split on every space character. So I'm going to console log here just so you guys can follow along and see where we're at. So if I run this, you can see the words array is essentially just all the words in the sentence split up into an array. That way we can look at each word individually. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually map through every single one of these words and in emojify word, I'm gonna check whether or not that word is an emoji or the short code for an emoji. And if it is, we're simply going to replace it with the emoji. So we're gonna do const uh, new words. So we're gonna make a new variable for new words and we're gonna do words.map. Uh, we're going to take each individual word. And now in here, if I were to console log, it would just, you know, loop through every single word. And what we're going to do is return uh, emojify of the word. And now <clears throat> if we go back to here, the first thing we're going to do with emojify word is obviously we only want to emojify words that are emojis. And the best way to check whether or not it is an emoji or not uh, is to check whether or not it has a colon on both sides. So if you want, we can make like a little like a little uh, helper function like, oh, check is word short code or something. But we can just do the logic here. So if uh, word dot starts with a colon and word dot ends with a colon, uh, we can go ahead and do the logic. Uh, Otherwise, we can just return the word itself. And in here, we're going to have a return statement, so we don't need to put like an else or anything. Um, so first, we're going to do, uh, first, we need to, our map is just the emoji. It doesn't have like the actual short codes around it. I guess technically, we could like add these like colons, everything here, so that it, the word matches properly. Um, but let's do it the way they, I guess, intended the problem to be solved. So we're going to do const. Uh, we're going to say like short code uh, 
equals word dot slice. And if you're not per, uh, familiar with slice, it allows you to like uh, pretty much take an array, which in a word technically counts as an array, uh, and allows you to trim anything off the uh, front or the end. So we can trim characters off. So we can say we want to trim the first character and the last character. Now, if we actually wanted to console.log short code here, short code, you'll see that uh, when it got when we gave it the angry emoji, it truncated it pretty much to angry instead of having the colons around it. And same with puke. Um, I'm gonna get rid of some of these extra console logs so that the only one we have is the final one, which is undefined right now because we're not returning anything, and the ones that we add. So we can see here in the case where we find an emoji and we console log it, we have just the basic uh, word now, not the colons around it. And then all we have to do is we have to just check. So if short, so if hacked emojis short code. So pretty much, if that short code lives in our hacked emojis uh, dictionary, um, then we're just going to return return the actual uh, new short code for it. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have to do. So now, if I were to console.log new words and run it. You can see here that the new words is those shoes and then the star emoji because we replaced the puke emoji from the example uh, with the star emoji. So this pretty much works. All we have to do now is now turn that back into a sentence. Um, and what you can do is just return new words and you can use the javascript.join uh, and join each element in that array with a space. So now, as you can see, um, yeah, it returns it properly, which is the base challenge. Uh, let's add like one or two more like sample cases. So like uh, man face palming with Santa. Like this Santa hat is itchy. Man face palming. Does that work? Nice. Okay. So the stretch call now, we don't want to replace just the short codes, but also any emojis that are added directly into text. Uh, so let's add both of these test cases, but let's replace... Uh, the short codes, so like colon puke with the emoji and the man face palming. Uh, where's that guy? Over here. We're going to replace that here as well. And this shouldn't work. We should just get it with the baseline emojis. Let's be real here. Nobody knows how to write regex that actually detects if something is an emoji or not. But my idea for this approach uh, when I was thinking about this was what we could do is just detect whether or not um, the word is an emoji, and if it is an emoji, uh, we can just add these emojis pretty much to the hacked emojis list and replace them. Now, to detect if text is an emoji or not, you actually have to use some regex, and unless you're some regex genius that knows how emojis works, you probably don't know the regex to check if something is an emoji. So I took the liberty of looking on Stack Overflow, and I found some guy that made this function. It's very basic. Is emoji character, and it will essentially just uh, return true or false whether or not the thing is an emoji. So, for example, uh, let's try this. So um, over here, we can add a new case. So else if uh, is emoji, and then we pass in the word console.log word. So now if we run this, you can see it detected the puke emoji as an emoji, and it detected the facepalm as an emoji. So now that we have this beautiful regex, which I'm not even going to pretend to understand because I suck at regex, let alone, you know, emoji-specific regex, uh, we can go over here. We can copy all of these bad boys. Let's add these here. Um, I have to add a comma here so it stops erroring. And we can go ahead and simply replace all of these with just their emojis. I think this is probably as good good as we're going to get with the formatting. So now that we have added all of these as well, uh, we pretty much do the same thing, right? We just replace it. We can go ahead and just copy and paste this code essentially and replace short code with word over here because the word itself, we don't need a short code because we don't need to get rid of the stuff. And bam, we have officially replaced the emojis. Now, if you want to be a great coder and you want to submit better code than I'm going to submit, you'll notice that this is some duplicate logic. And if you follow dry principles, you know you shouldn't repeat yourself. So there's a couple of cool things that you can do to you know simplify this code a bit. For example, you can make like let replaced word 
And then over here, you can go ahead and set replaced word to equal a short code. And over here, you can set replaced word to be equal to the word because we've detected it's emoji. And then at the end, we can say if replaced word. So if we've assigned it a value, which means it had to have been in one of these two cases, then we just do that logic and return. Otherwise, we just return the word. Oh, yeah. And don't forget to uh, replace all the word references to replaced word here. And bam. Um, this still isn't the most elegant code, but I'll leave it up to you guys when you submit your submission to try and make this a lot nicer. So we've completed the task and the stretch goal, and we've tested out with a couple different cases. I'm going to go ahead and submit this solution. Wow, really well done solving this challenge. Give yourself Thank you, a Matt. pat on the back for that. I hope you also remembered to share it on social media as that Oh, I'm sharing it on chances. social media. Well, that was day three of JavaScriptmas chat. I highly recommend checking out Solving It Yourself. Also, check out Scrimma's platform. It's sort of like learning how to code from the future. They have a ton of courses that are not just aimed to teach you stuff, but also to make you job ready, like a front-end developer career path course, one on AI engineering, and things that you would actually use in the real world instead of things like Leak Code, which are pretty much just useless. And a lot of companies are actually transitioning to interviews that are more like take home tests and stuff like that. So this is by far one of the biggest platforms I recommend learning how to code on. And make sure you guys are solving those problems as they drop so you can optimize your chance to win that 13 inch MacBook Air M3. What a beautiful machine. I mean, like, come on, how many other platforms try to teach you how to code and give you stuff while you are coding? Good luck and I'll see you guys in the next video.